Greetings to you wherever you are in the world. Um, today, my name is Diana Wolf, and I'm from Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I'm a subspecialist in maternal fetal medicine. And today, uh, this is the second of a series of lectures on hypertension in pregnancy. And this one is on chronic hypertension in pregnancy. So, let's get started. These are the learning objectives. One is to understand the maternal and fetal risks of uncontrolled chronic hypertension in pregnancy. The second is to understand the medication choices for treatment of hypertension in pregnancy. And lastly, to understand the superimposed preeclampsia. So, let's start with the American College of OBGYN's definition of chronic hypertension. What is the criteria for diagnosis? For mild blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure must be greater than or equal to 140, or the diastolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 90. The severe range is systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 180, or diastolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 110. So, that being said, a, pa a pregnant woman may have this blood pressure at different times in her pregnancy. But those pregnant women who have those blood pressures, whether they're mild or severely elevated, if they use antihypertensives medications before pregnancy, or if the onset of these high blood pressures were prior to their 20th week of gestation, or if it was persistent beyond the 12 week postpartum, then they are a chronic hypertensive. So is that clear? Let's just say it briefly once again. A chronic hypertensive is what? A chronic hypertensive is a patient who has these high blood pressures beyond the 12th week postpartum and or before the 20th week of gestation or if at any point they required antihypertensive medication prior to pregnancy. So what are the challenges? There's a challenge to discriminate between the exacerbation of pre-existing hypertension and the onset of superimposed preeclampsia. What is the difference? The rate of progression and the effect on the mother and fetus of these conditions are different. So is that clear? What I'm saying here is that the way that superimposed preeclampsia and the way that worsening pre-existing hypertension can affect mother and fetus in different ways. But it's a huge challenge to distinguish these differences. It's very hard, and we're gonna talk about that more in this lecture. Now, chronic hyper the hypertension is associated with malignant hypertension. That's hypertension that's in the very severe range. Blood pressure that's beyond a systolic of 180 and or a diastolic beyond 110. Also, central nervous system hemorrhage, bleeding into the brain, cardiac decompensation, or renal kidney deterioration or failure. This is why a pregnant patient who has pre-existing hypertension is something we really need to pay attention to and identify because look at the different severe associations that exist with them. Now, a pregnant woman with chronic hypertension, it's been shown that the decidual vessels of the woman with pre-existing hypertension demonstrate vascular changes that are similar to the changes in renal arterioles in women with long-standing hypertension. So isn't that interesting? Pregnant women with hypertension, there is a decrease in the uteroplacental perfusion resulting from this change, which may be additive and perhaps synergistic with the decidual vascular changes of preeclampsia. Decidual vascular changes can explain a higher incidence of placental abruption, that is, separation of the placenta from the uterus, in women with superimposed preeclampsia. So what I'm trying to say here with these scientific terms is that a patient with chronic hypertension is at much higher risk for superimposed preeclampsia because if you understand the pathophysiology in the <laughs> pregnant woman who has chronic hypertension, it's very similar to, pre to what happens in a preeclamptic patient. That being said, the disease process, if you have somebody in the third trimester with superimposed preeclampsia versus somebody who has preeclampsia, they're not the same patient. 
because chronic hypertension is associated with these very bad outcomes.